Um, so really what I'm here to do today is to give you a wee bit of background to the development of the Scots Language Award because that will help put it in context and give you an understanding of, of where we are now and why we are where we are now and then give you a bit of detail uh, about the award so that you can, you can when you go to look at the materials um, you, you've got a, a good understanding and a general overview of the award, uh, the award to start off with. Now I'm not sure if everybody can see this but this is probably as much for my benefit as it is for yours. Um, this is just to keep me on track as we go uh, uh, along. Um, just to give you the kind of set the award in context, um, it's already been mentioned that I was here last year to talk about the Scottish Studies Award. Um, and it was really after the development of the Scottish Studies Award that I started getting a lot of feedback um, regarding Scots language. And the main reason for that was there was no discrete Scots language units within the Scottish Studies Award. Um, however, there were quite a number of Gaelic options that people could study as part of the award and quite rightly a lot of people pointed out why have we got these discrete opportunities to study Gaelic but we don't have to study the Scots language and that's really what um, started the whole thing off and indeed at the um, conference last year um, I, I got that feedback as well from some people at that time. Whenever we get feedback regarding uh, demand for a qualification, we have to carry out a, a kind of a, a exercise to look at is there going to be any uptake for it? Because yes, we can develop qualifications, we can develop qualifications in anything, but there's no point in us developing qualifications unless people want to deliver them. So it was important for us to establish, first of all, whether or not there were any teachers or any schools, any centres out there who would be interested in actually delivering the award. So we carried out two surveys. Um, one was a, a general survey which went out to um, uh, organisations and people who were interested in Scots language in general. And you'll, it was no surprise to us from that survey that a lot of people were saying, yep, yeah, we definitely should have some qualification in Scots. It's one of the languages of Scotland and it's really a disgrace that it's not there already. However, not many teachers um, and are, are fed back into that survey. I'm not surprised because you were all dealing with your new national three to five and I'm sure at that point Scots language was not high on the agenda. Um, but then what we did is we sent out a very targeted survey to schools and we asked for a school response. And roughly the response from that was 50% saying, go away and leave us alone, we've got enough to worry about. And the other 50% saying, definitely, it's about time we did something and had some kind of qualification in the Scots language. So although it wasn't an overwhelming majority, we got enough... Um, information and enough feedback from that survey to schools to establish that yep if we develop some qualification in Scots then it's likely that there would be uptake and interest in that so that allowed us to put a business case together and get the funding to actually develop the award and that was granted last year in November and we had to launch in June so we didn't have much time to to uh, do that and um, so um, we got together uh, a group of people with different representatives, um, experts in the Scots language and teachers to help us to work on developing this qualification. Part of the, part of the, or the very first thing in actual fact I asked the, the, what we call the qualifications design team to do was to think about exactly what qualification are we going to develop. We got funding that would allow us to develop two units across four levels. So, so I knew we could do that, but exactly what kind of qualification would we develop? Um, and I'm going to do this back to front. When I talk to the qualif uh, qualifications design team members about what kind of qualification we developed, we, we talked about the merits of maybe just having standalone units that peop people could pick up as they go along or to develop a small award that would consist of those two units at each level. And the QDT were very much in favour of us developing an award. 
Um, awards are standalone units, uh, although they are value in, their, in themselves, don't tend to have the same uh, level of credibility among the teaching profession, and we are aware of that. Whereas a coherent qualification tends to have a bit more credibility for those who are delivering and also the pupils who are sitting it. Awards also have a big advantage in that, um, unlike a national course, where you have to start in August, or indeed many people start at the end of May, because that's when the timetable changes, and then you have to have it all finished by the time the exam comes along. But awards do not have a final exam. They're internally assessed by teachers and lecturers, if they're delivered in college, and they're externally quality assured by SQE. So they can actually be delivered very, very flexibly from, uh, from a concentrated block of time, which quite often awards are delivered in colleges like that, to being spread over a number of months, or indeed they could be delivered over a couple of years if necessary. The other reason why we felt an award would be attractive is that unlike the national advice for national courses, awards can start being delivered from S3 onwards and that's a national agreement with the Scottish Government and with, um, with uh, Education Scotland. So we know that teachers can comfortably start delivering those in S3 as well. Um, another reason why an award we felt would be um, more, uh, more attractive is that um, in terms of fitting a, a Scots language uh, qualification within the already very crowded curriculum, a, a, a small award would make that much, much easier to do rather than a much larger uh, course as well. Um, also, we wanted to be able to encourage as many people as possible to deliver this, to help start building expertise uh, and confidence in delivering Scots qualifications. And if, you, if you're delivering a, a um, full course with an exam at the end, that might not have been the best way of going about that uh, there. And, and so w we were wanting to encourage good uptake in the, the qualification from the start. So what, is the, what, what does the award look like? I'll give you a kind of brief overview now and I'll talk about each of the units in a wee bit more detail uh, later on. There are two units and there are two mandatory units. There are no optional units. There are two mandatory units in the award. One is Scots Language History and Development, and I'll talk about that in a bit more detail, and Scots, Scots Language Understanding and Communicating, which basically does what it says on the tin. Um, each of the units are in a hierarchy, and I know teachers will be familiar with that, but basically just to remind you, it means that it's very easy to step up or step down because the, the, the units kind of cover the same type of things, but just at a different, at higher level. So all the units have the same name at each level, and really they're just differentiated by the level of detail and depth um, of, of the, the responses that your students give. Um, the other thing that we wanted to do, because the original impetus, if you remember, was... Um, feedback from about the Scottish Studies Award is we wanted to make sure that the units could also contribute to the St Scottish Studies Award if people wanted them to. So each of the units at each level is an optional unit in the Scottish Studies Award, but only one of them can count to the, the award. You can't use both of them to count to the Scottish Studies Award. Okay? So, again, to encourage uptake but also to encourage relevance. Um, we wanted the, the um, award and the coverage of the award to be as flexible as possible. So, dependent on what resources you have, dependent on the context and the interests of your students, you've got a lot of freedom in terms of what you cover as part of the award. The texts that you might study and the methods of communication for, for the understanding and communication unit, you, you've got complete freedom there. In the history and development unit, they look at historical and cultural factors that have helped to shape the language. Again, 
There's no, manda no mandatory uh, set things that you have to look at. You can draw on what is most relevant uh, and mo most relevant to your students and the resources that you have in delivering that unit. And in that history and development unit as well, they look at Scots words, linguistic features at a higher level. Again, you can choose the ones most relevant to you um, or to, and to your students. And the other thing is we didn't want to uh, be in a position where we were starting to try to, to define what is Scots. Right, that bit, that there is just not Scots, but this is Scots. Um, so uh, you can look at the, or you can study the award, students can study the award in the context of any local or regional dialect of Scots. And you can see how that might make things, th how you can make that really, really relevant to students who are living in a particular, in, in your particular area and who are coming to your, your school. So um, again, flexibility in the understanding and communicating unit, they've got to um, communicate in Scots and demonstrate an understanding of Scots. And again, I'll look at that in a bit more detail, but the communications and the text they're studying could be written, oral, electronic or multimedia. So again, that gives you flexibility in terms of grabbing your students' interests or indeed playing on your students' talents, whatever particular uh, ways of communicating and, and understanding are most relevant to them. In the history and development unit, they look at historical and cultural factors. Again, you've got complete freedom to choose relevant historical cultural factors and also freedom to choose words and phrases that are going to be relevant there. So before I go on to look at the units in a wee bit more detail, I'll be get, I'll, Ronnie, I'll send you this presentation so that you can, people, people can have access to it. Um, you'll find the award uh, and the, the unit specifications and support notes on our website, and that's the web address there. Um, we are developing assessment support packs to go along with each unit at each level. We'd been hoping that those would be available at the end of this month, but it's going to be December now <coughs> before um, the, they actually go up. Um, and what we're going to be doing is we're doing it in two stages. We're going to do levels four and five first, because that's kind of the centre level. And if you see those, it will give you an idea of, right, what would the step up be from level five to higher, or not to higher, to level six, or what would the step down be to level three? And then the, the, the level three and six uh, assessment support packs will be available in March, okay? Um, we will communicate directly with your centres to let, um, let you know when those go up. So what I'm going to do now is I'll just go through each of the units What's its purpose? What are the outcomes? How are they differentiated? And just to, to kind of orientate you to the general, uh, the, the, the kind of overview of the award. So as I said, we've got two units. Um, it was very important when we, were, when we were working with the QDT. The QDT thought it was really important that if we were developing two units, yeah, okay, ideally we want people to do the award, but they might do they might only do cover one unit. For example, if they, were, if they were using one of the units to contribute to the Scottish Studies Award, they might not study the other unit and, and, and complete the Scots Language Award. So everybody felt that it was very important that both units involved students engaging with the language, not just learning a bit about Scots, but also learning some Scots. So in the history and development unit, um, there's not just, uh, it doesn't just involve them finding out about what has influenced the development of Scots, but it also involves them engaging with the language at some level. So um, they'll look at the history and development of the Scots language. They look at the relationship between Scots and other languages by looking at words and phrases in Scots and looking at, at, at um, similar words and phrases in other languages. And at levels five and six, which is equivalent to credit and higher or national five and higher, um, they also look at linguistic features 
of Scots as well. They don't have to do that at levels three and four, but at levels five and six, that is in addition to looking at words and phrases. So the outcomes, um, I've already mentioned the fact that the outcomes are more or less the same at each level, but they're differentiated in terms of the depth and the complexity of either what students are studying or what they're producing. So um, across the levels, they'll either have to describe, explain or analyse factors that have helped to shape the contemporary Scots language, and that's important for this unit. And then they'll also have to describe, explain and analyse features of the Scots language and the f of, of the contemporary Scots language, and that's words, phrases, and at levels five and six, linguistic features as well. Um, yep, so you'll see the key, key kind of indicators there to let you see that you're just looking, you're doing the same thing, but in more depth at each level, are you describe, explain, and analyze. And we've tried to differentiate the units in such a way that will be very familiar to English teachers, because you're used to the language of the English qualification. So we wanted to give a clear signal that that's the kind of thing that you're looking for in the, the Scots Language Award as well. We've put quite a lot of guidance in the support notes for the award. So if you're interested and you're thinking about it, please, please look there because we've tried to help people and give them as many ideas as possible um, in, in the, the support notes. So <clears throat> for example, in the support notes for the, the History and Development Unit, there are examples of factors, historical factors that you could look at, cultural factors, and also, uh, and, and, and those cover anything from political, geographical, social, or attitu attitudinal uh, factors. So there's quite a considerable list that a lot of time was put into to try and make sure people could get ideas that would be relevant to them. However, I will say to you, and it's, it very clearly states in the support notes, that list is not mandatory. If you can think of other historical and cultural factors that are more relevant in your area, you're quite free to, to explore it in that way. And again, um, in the, the, the second outcome, where they're looking at, at, um, at words and linguistic features, um, we've given a lot of examples of the types of things that you could be looking at. Um, and I will, I will stress here, it's not the case in the Understanding and Communicating Unit, but in, um, in the History and Development Unit, it is contemporary Scots, because again, the QDT felt it was extremely important that whatever the qualification did, it didn't give people the impression that Scots was dead and something that was in the past, but that it was also something that was living and being used today in Scotland as well. In terms of assessing the unit, the evidence, we've, we've again been very, very flexible in terms of how you can go about assessing it. Um, so your evidence can be written, oral, multimedia. Um, we have said that the evidence should be produced under supervision because you are testing their knowledge. Um, but at appropriate points when you feel that the, the students are ready to be assessed and to produce the evidence of what they've learned. Um, we have not, we did toy with, I know at the beginning in the QDT, we should be giving people an idea of the, the, the kind of number of factors they should be looking at, how many words they should cover at different levels. But then when we tried to do that while we were developing it, it just did not make sense. So there's no mandatory number of factors or words or linguistic features. Um, Really, the main differentiation is, as I've mentioned already, the depth and detail that they go into for that. Okay. Going on to the understanding and communicating unit. As I said, it does what it says in the tin. It's designed to help students develop an understanding of the actual Scots language and also their ability to communicate in Scots. Again, as I've mentioned uh, before, uh, further back, um, 
the, the, the Scots that they look at can be f from a contemporary perspective, a local regional dialect. Um, it can be, it, they, might, they might want to study a kind of classical type, classical, I know that was your word, Ronnie, classical, lots of people didn't like it, a kind of classic text in Scots, but equally they could be looking at uh, texts, either written or oral texts, using contemporary Scots. So that gives you quite a lot of freedom there. Um, so, and again, for outcome one, they can do a written, oral or multimedia, and, and importantly for outcome two, they can communicate orally or in writing. So that allows you to let your students, uh, your individual students, play to their strengths. So we're not asking they do both, they can do either or. Okay, so for um, the understanding and communicating unit, they have to, th th this will be very familiar to English teachers, I hope, uh, they have to either demonstrate an understanding or understand, analyse and evaluate simple, straightforward or detailed and detailed and complex text. So you'll see we've, we've drawn on the language very, very closely that you're familiar with for that one. And for outcome two, again, they've either got to create or create and produce um, simple, straightforward, detailed or detailed and complex text in Scots. Oh dear, I've noticed a typo. Um, <laughs> for a specific purpose and audience. I'll need to fix that before I send you this, Ronnie. I'm glad it's not an apostrophe in the wrong place. <laughs> that would be death. <laughs> I've already mentioned this. It's very that, that particular unit has been very deliberately phrased and, and couched in such a way to, 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 to um, let English, to, that will be familiar to English teachers, hopefully to give you that sense of comfort of this is not completely different from what I am doing. We're just looking at it in the context of Scots, which I know many of you will do anyway in terms of text that you study uh, with, your, with your students. Okay, in the further guidance um, section, um, again, we didn't want to put mandatory texts in here. We wanted to give people as much freedom as possible. But in the, the support notes, you will get a, a lot of examples of the types of texts that you could be looking at, both written, oral or multi multimedia. And that's really to, to give you um, some ideas. But again, if you can think of different ones, that's fine. You could, you, 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 you've got the freedom to choose whichever are most relevant. And again, communications can be in any local or regional dialect that the students, um, that, 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 that the students feel comfortable with. Um, again, with this unit, we're, we're very flexible about how you assess it. Written, oral, electronic, mul multimedia, they can produce. Um, Again, it's got to be under supervision and we have stated for assessment purposes that you need to have evidence of one uh, text that they've understood for outcome one and one text that they've produced for outcome two. So obviously you can look at more than that in the context of the delivery of the unit, but all we need is we need evidence for one of each for uh, assessment purposes. Okay. And Finally, um, very, very conscious when we were developing that the timetable, as I say, is very busy, that um, people will be looking for space to deliver uh, the, the qualification if you decide to deliver it. Um, it's, it's not that somebody's not going to do their higher English because they're doing Scots. Ideally, it would be great if they would do their higher English and the Scots Language Award. So we wanted to give people ideas about how you could integrate assessment of the two units if you wanted to deliver the award. So in the support notes, um, we've given quite a few examples of ways in which you could deliver and assess the different outcomes from the units, from the units together in such a way that by covering it in a certain way, you'll produce evidence for more than one unit at a time. Um, so we've given examples of how you could integrate the assessment of both, both outcomes in the one unit, but also of both unit, the, the four outcomes 
through one, uh, one approach. Um, but we've given different examples of that. Um, again, these are examples to give you ideas. If you can think, of, you're, you're the experts. If you can think of better ways of integrating it, that's fine as well. The main thing is that you have evidence that they've covered and that they've passed each of the outcomes in the two units. And finally, my time has come. I am giving up the, uh, the mantle, or I'm handing over the mantle of Scots language um, because I'm moving on. Uh, I, I, I do project, tend to do project work. So once one project's finished, I move on. So the, the award is now, the Scots Language Award is now moving to another qualifications manager called Marilyn Waters. And I, I think some of you will know her. Uh, and her able assistant, Malcolm over there, if you want to put your hand up, Malcolm. <laughs> um, so if you've got any queries about the award, then th these are the people to contact. And as I say, I'll be sending Ronnie the presentation and he'll be able to get it out. You'll get the contact details there. But the qualifications manager will be Marilyn and, and Malcolm uh, will, will also be involved in, in supporting uh, the award. And that just leaves me with to ask you if you've got any questions. And I hope I've done that in time. Yep. Yep. For the award. Okay, it's the, it's the sum of the two units. So, Malcolm, can you remember? Is it seven pounds fifty per unit? For the whole award, so there's no additional course entry. So it's the the, the cost of the two units. Um, if you're entering for the award, because schools are very used to entering for national courses, not necessarily for awards. If you're entering for the award, just by entering for the two units won't automatically pop up an award um, certificate if they've passed the two units. You have to also enter for the award code that's what, what and once you put a pass in for the two units children will automatically get the the award once they've passed so you make sure you don't just enter for, if you want to do the award don't just enter for the two units enter for the award code as well okay Are there any other questions no Okay, and uh, just, just on a wee final note, um, at the um, launch event that we had in June for the award, I was extremely heartened when a teacher came along with evidence towards the history and development unit that they had started delivering at the beginning of June. There are three schools who are kind of piloting it this year, but if anybody else wants to come on board at this stage, that's fine, because remember, it's not tied to the diet and hopefully from those three centres we'll be able to get some case studies done that will help and give people ideas um, if they want to start delivering it as well. Okay.